Yes, uh, my name is Dan Ficker, and uh, this is Demystifying Composer. <clears throat> We're going to try to get you lots of information about Composer. Um, and yeah, first you get to see about me, apparently. Um, this is just what everyone does. So yeah, I, I work at Pantheon as a customer success engineer, uh, which means if you have problems with Pantheon, you get one of my teammates or myself uh, when you submit a support ticket or chat. Uh, and uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's been going pretty well. But yeah, I've been using Drupal for a long time. And uh, I'd like to do yeah, building sites, debugging, developing. And I live in Minnesota here, St. Paul. So that's just quickly about me. Quick, and then what we'll go through on this session here, just what is Composer, how to use it, um, how it works with Drupal. And we'll try to have some time for Q&A and tips and tricks. So if you have some, some your favorite commands or things, we can try to talk about those too. Uh, first, yeah, let's just jump right into it. What is Composer? Um, it's what what is called a dependency manager. Um, the official website right there is gitcomposer.org. This is a screenshot at the top of the page. It looks very old school as far as <laughs> websites go. Not a really fancy design, um, but it works. Uh, yeah, it's a command line based tool, uh, and it's similar to NPM or Bundler, um, which are some other package managers for other languages um, or other uh, platforms and stuff. But this one's written and used by PHP for the most part. And since Drupal is written in PHP, it's used. To, let's, let's use that. Um, <laughs> you might be asking, what's a dependency manager? And that's a good question. Uh, in modern PHP stuff like Drupal, many different libraries are used. Those are just packages of code, basically, that. Uh, do a specific function. Um, many years ago, Drupal <laughs> used to basically just do everything, and it, somebody wrote every, every, somebody wrote code to, you know, make HTTP requests to other sites and other things. And at some point, Drupal said, "Hey, let's just try to use the thing that somebody else in the PHP world has already written." And when we said, "Oh, that that'd be easy," but you also need to kind of manage all those things, and that's where Composer comes in. Um, so yeah, libraries help to make, yeah, maintain code instead of building from scratch. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, Drupal and other libraries. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Reading here. <laughs> yeah. It it just helps with making all those libraries uh, handle it. So you you know basically you just Google or Drupal just says, hey, I have these. You know, I, I want I want to run, but I need all these things to do it. And you just run, tell Composer, install everything that Drupal needs, and Composer figures out which version would be best to use, and uh, and then it has a lot of tools as far that we'll talk about here with being able to update libraries, install them, uh, and customize things in other ways too. Um, we'll just jump right into kind of how the Composer system works here. Uh, the biggest and most important file, or well, no, maybe not biggest, but the most important file is in the root of any project. There's a composer.json file, and that uh, just it, it. You can see it kind of a, the start of it right here, but it basically says to install this project. Um, this is one I just installed from a Pantheon site, but basically to install this site, it needs all this information, um, and it, these are the different libraries that it requires, and those libraries, those. those Libraries might require other libraries too. So, but it's a text file in a JSON format. Um, yeah, it's a, basically just a list of requirements and other settings that uh, th that uh, the site needs to run. And uh, yeah, and it can, can include a few other things like we won't talk about too much, but there is ways to kind of like modify, provide a patch file to like modify Drupal core and other things, um, other modules if you need to. Um, that the composer.json file is really just a list of things that are required, where the composer.lock file is actually what's currently installed in that version of the site's code. Um, so you, the first time you run a composer install, it'll say, okay, I need to install all these. It'll make this composer.lock.json file 
that will basically list. It's a very, very, very long file. This is the only, the first like 45 lines or something, um, which basically just has like, this is one of the libraries that's needed and here's all the info about that library, but it kind of repeats itself ad nauseum for many, many, many thousands of lines. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, at any given time, you, you know, what you don't want to have happen is every time you, you run Composer, it would just install the newest thing. So this Composer.lock says, currently I'm locked to using these current versions until we do an update of all these libraries. Um, yeah, exactly which versions. And then, yeah, for example, in Drupal, example, like a site might say, I want Drupal core version 10, uh, but then it'll actually just install the current version that you have currently installed and won't update it until you actually ask it to be updated. Um, this can be nice because uh, sometimes, well, you might use Composer in your actual deployment process. So actually say, you know, run Composer, or like basically yeah, you might just have a little bit of code that says here's all the Composer files, all, all the Composer.json Composer lock files, and then every time you deploy, you might actually just run Composer install and pull in all that information. And yeah, keep going here on more about, uh, yeah, so I mentioned that a little bit earlier too, that Dru Drupal you know, requires a few libraries, but those libraries have other libraries that they require. So that's where <laughs> Composer can get long and confusing uh, a little bit, because everything requires a bunch of different things. PHP uses, or Drupal uses a lot of things like Guzzle is an HTTP library. Symfony libraries are a lot of other libraries that do various little tasks within Drupal. And uh, Drupal core can require those, but also Drupal modules and themes and things can require those. And sometimes they don't all require the same version. So that can be a complication within Composer as well. But um, Composer, yeah. Yeah, Composer just does all the work to kind of, when you just Composer install, it'll say, which, wor which version works with everything? I'll install that one. Um, if it doesn't, if you don't have that composer to lock file saying I'm already using these versions. Um, let's see, yeah. Keep track of which version is needed. Yeah, and then the libraries can be updated to newer versions uh, when, when you want to do that. Um, only when you want to do that. Um, but that's what we'll talk about in next here in a minute here. So, well, in a minute. First, yeah, uh, when you create a new site, there's a few ways you could do that, a, a new project. A, this is mostly I'm thinking if you're thinking about just creating a new Drupal site. Um, if you go into the Drupal documentation on the Drupal website, it'll say, you can just say, run the Composer Create Project, recommended project, and then the name of your folder. And it will basically just make a new composer.json that has all the Drupal stuff built in there. Um, and you know, if you use Pantheon, the way you can do that is just create a new site on Pantheon, and it will install all the Composer stuff for you as well, too. But um, then you can just clone the site down. But we'll talk about that for a minute too, just in case you're using Pantheon, but only a minute at the end. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the Composer data is stored in those composer.json and composer lock files I mentioned, but also it puts some PHP files in various places when you run composer install. Um, Question? Yeah? Can you run composer on an existing site? Uh, let's see, for Drupal, nine and 10, you really almost need to have Composer running, um, or you need to be using Composer to basically install Drupal. Um, I think in almost every case, there might be a zip file that you can download from Drupal.org that will at least get Composer core working, or Drupal core working without Composer. But yeah, I th with modern Drupal, you, you, you basically you need to run Composer when you're adding and removing modules and other things like that. Um, with Drupal 7 and 8, it's a little less required, um, or well, definitely not 7. Uh, 7, so have I haven't used much. Um, that's a good question. I don't actually have too much information on that here. If, if you're using Drupal 7, uh, most of the modules don't require you use Composer at this point, but you could use Composer, I believe. Uh, there might be some, you might have to do, like, Drupal 8, there are 9 and 10, and future versions will all have a composer.json file right in the root of, of Drupal. Um, and Drupal 7, I don't think, has one included by default. And so you might have to do a little bit more to uh, kind of, you know, 
get that to work with Composer. Um, but it, I think it's possible. Um, or you could use Composer for some parts of your site. And I haven't done that in a while, so I don't remember all the details. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then, oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah, so if you, if you wanted to create like your own Composer libraries, you could run this Composer init command. Uh, which basically says, uh, it'll basically walk you through the steps of like what you need in a composer.json file. Um, and that would be if you're like, you know, making your own custom module or theme that you want to connect with Composer. Um, so that's kind of how you start or create a project. Um, yeah, and then this command, composer require, is one that you put in your, um, let's see, I, think, I guess I didn't talk too much in here about installing composer. There are instructions on Composer, get composer.org, how to install Composer. It's just a command line tool. You could install it via Homebrew or you could install it and download the, the Composer uh, executable it, itself and install it on your local machine. So this is where you usually are running all the commands on your local machine with a local copy of your code. Um, but yeah, when you run Composer require and then the name of the module, like right here I put path auto, you, or Composer require Drupal slash and then the module name, it'll basically run all the what you get right here is that I ran the command up there and it actually just installed this module and a few other modules that it needed. Um, so it ran, yeah, installed the C tools and, uh, and token module, which Path Auto also needs to run. Um, so, but it also, it, it just added to the composer.json file, just I need Path Auto, I need this version, and then it installed all the other things that it just needed, just because it knew it needed it. And yeah, it, Composer will give you an error if it says there's no version that works with this version of Drupal, but that won't happen for Path Auto at least. <laughs> for some modules, it could. Uh, if if you do, you know, if it doesn't work with Drupal 10 yet or Drupal 9 or something like that, or. But then yeah, so the, what it, what it does is it yeah first writes to the composer.json file saying hey, I'm going to you know now require this anytime I run in Composer install again. And then it adds to the composer.lock file each of these actual versions that it just installed for all those libraries. And then it actually downloads the code and, uh, and puts it in your, uh, in your uh, local copy of the code there. Um, and then, yeah, there's an option to, if the library is only really used for development, um, there is a, a section just for development that you could actually optionally not install when you're going to be deploying your code to live. Um, so if you put that dash dash dev when you're after the require, it would it'll put it in a different section of the composer.json that only runs when you're doing development stuff. So, uh, and then, yeah, we've talked about, I talked about this a little bit now, but we're going to go into more of the composer, .in, or composer install command, which is basically where it, it, let's see, the first time it runs, if you haven't, don't have a composer.lock file, it will actually uh, just run, it, it'll basically have to do all the work to decide which versions of everything can I install um, based on all these requirements that we have in the composer.json file. And then it will actually just install whichever one's versions it thinks are probably the newest and best that are, are compatible. And then it will com populate the composer.lock file. If the composer.lock file already exists, then it will just not even really look at much of the composer.json file, it'll actually just install everything. And so that's what I ran over here too. You can see it's, it goes on and on and on, like installing hundreds of different libraries. And I don't even know what most of them do, to be honest. But <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's all stuff, most of that's all stuff, like I think all I did on this test site that I was playing with is just install like Path Auto and other things. So most of these things are all required by Drupal Core um, in Drupal 9 or 10. I think I, this is a Drupal 10 site, I believe. If you look at it, says Drupal core in there somewhere, probably. Yeah, co core, composer, scaffold, and of course things are 10.1.2 is what I was installing here, it looks like. Or 1.3, yeah. So yeah, it installs a lot of stuff, and I don't know if we need to know what every single one of them does, but <laughs> it'll, it'll mostly just work um, as far as installing those things for core. Um, yeah, and when you run in Composer install, by default, it does in include all that dev stuff. So there are a couple things that core requires of a dev and variety. 
So it'll actually add some coding tools. And if you include the dash dash no dev flag, um, it'll actually not include all those dev libraries if you don't need them. Um, if you're, it, that would be, again, if you're kind of like deploying this to live right now, um, don't include that. And then, yeah, and then I, I just put a note in here too that, you know, when it runs Composer install, it shouldn't be actually updating things. There's another command to do that um, that we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, and so it shouldn't really modify either of those files, the composer.json or composer lock files. But what it does do is when you're installing everything, it puts a lot of code, even Drupal core, it'll put in the code or in the core folder and then you contribute to modules that are required there. It'll put in the modules folder, themes and the themes folder. And then lots of other libraries, like all those other PHP ones that we've never heard of before, Symfony and things, it'll put in a vendor folder um, in, inside the code as well. Uh, that's the default thing for if, if it doesn't define somewhere else. But in the composer.json file, you can see it says, if it's a Drupal module, put it in the modules folder under the contrib area usually. But you can modify that too. Um, let's see. I, yeah, these are kind of my notes here, but let's see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, so that, that's why I was just saying there too, yeah, the, the composer like libraries sometimes are in different places, but. And yeah, the next thing we'll talk about here too is this composer update command. So composer definitely can help you keep your site up to date. Uh, anytime you wanna update some stuff, you just run composer update and it will just check all the libraries and see what their latest version is and decide if it can actually install it or not. Um, I think, yeah, if, if you look here, it was, yeah, let's see, is there Drupal core in here? Yeah, so if you look at Drupal core, somewhere in the middle there, it says it was on 10.0.9 and I have to 10.1.2. And all these other things had minor version updates as well. Um, so it, it doesn't seem like it's a major version update, but there's a lot of little libraries that moved around uh, or updated there when I ran that composer update. So what it, yeah, what it does there, it really doesn't, composer update doesn't change anything in the composer.json file. The requirements of your project didn't change really. It just, the minor versions did change. Um, so so it, yeah, it just updated all the new things to the latest version. Um, yeah, if there is a, if there is a newer version that some library says, I don't work with that library, it, it'll say, I don't work with that new version, I only like this older version, then when you run Composer Update, just nothing will change in, in that regard. So sometimes you can get, that can get a little frustrating when you're saying, I know there's a newer version of Drupal Core, why won't it update? And I'll talk a little bit about later, maybe in the Q&A section about how to kind of work through that. But um, yeah. When do you use the with dependencies? Yeah. Okay. That's a good, a good question. Yeah. Uh, I, I will mention that here in a minute too. But yeah, the uh, when you update Drupal core, it says with dependencies, and what that means, I think, is is uh, that's a flag that you can put in there, and it will actually say, oh, if there are major version updates to to various things, let's also update those too, and. If you don't do that, yeah, it might just say, oh, I can't update that because something else requires it. Um, and we'll we'll look at that here in a second here, I think, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, first of all, I guess I'll just, yeah, there's a link here to detailed documentation on how to use Drupal and Composer in Drupal's documentation, which is generally very, very good. And uh, it, it the other thing that I think is really cool and helpful is I showed these screenshots here is right on module pages and even Drupal cores pages, there's usually, here's the composer require command that you'd need to run to install this version. Um, and so you can just copy and paste that, that command or just type it in um, and it will, composer will just basically install that, that version of that module. Um, and yeah, this is at the top of the module page and this is like, if you click on that release n n version number, it's more detail about the module, but it still has the same, thing on both pages. Um, actually, that one's a slightly older version, but I think if you do that, it might still install the newer version because it knows the newer version's better. But you could you could do some work to kind of force it to use that version if you really want to. I don't know if that's really recommended, but um, 
Yeah, and so, let's see, yeah. Yeah, and the, the, the other thing that's great about this too is just, it works great with Drupal. When you run Composer Update, it just goes onto the Drupal Composer server that Drupal maintains, that, that has a list of all the modules and all the versions. Um, so whenever a new version comes out, automatically Composer right away knows about it. So, uh, and then, yeah, major version upgrades of Drupal, like you were talking about, are a little bit different because there's, there's usually a lot of, let's see, yeah, it, there's usually something that it, it says, usually somewhere in your composer.json file it will say, I want to only use this version. And if you're using a major version, you have to kind of basically tell it, actually, even though I normally wouldn't update certain parts of this um, because it's a new version, I want to get a new version. And so that's where, uh, yeah, it says update all the core folders, or yeah, composer update core with all dependencies, which means, yeah, usually, if it was just a, a major version update, the composer probably wouldn't want, wouldn't do that unless you say, hey, I really, really do want to update this. <laughs> it wants to kind of get your confirmation, like I do want to change from this version that I'm currently at to a new major version. Um, usually, you, you have it kind of set to say, hey, I only want the minor updates that are security and bug fixes, um, but this is a way to get around that. Um, and then, yeah. <laughs> I just have a little tip here too that when you're upgrading from Drupal 9 to Drupal 10, I found it's easier to make sure, first, make sure that all the modules are compatible with Drupal 10 and then update them to the newest version that is compatible if they're compatible for both 9 and 10. And then you'll have less things to do when you do the major version update at the same time. So th this can be a little complicated because there are still some modules that just don't yet work with Drupal 10. And there, there are some ways to get around that. Um, and, but they can be kind of complicated, <laughs> and I uh, sometimes think maybe just try to wait until the modules developers have a Drupal 10 version so soon, hopefully. Um, obviously Drupal 10 is going out of support, or Drupal 9 is not all, no longer going to be supported in a few months here, so hopefully soon all the modules will have a version that works with Drupal 10, so. Um, let's see, oh yeah, I'll talk a little bit here about Pantheon. and. Composer and Drupal. Um, yeah, when you if, if you use Pantheon in the dashboard, you can basically just say, hey, create a new site, and we'll actually just give you a, 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 basically a Composer-based site right away um, at Drupal 10. And, and you can then just clone the site down, or clone the Git repository, and run Composer install on your local machine, and you actually have basically a working site then. Um, one thing that's really cool about this, to some extent, and what, one reason to use Composer is that your code in your Git repository is much smaller because it doesn't have a copy of all of Drupal core and all these many modules in your code. It's just the code is is just the Composer file and maybe a few custom files that you have, modules and things that are not in Git in Composer. And then every time you install, it just puts in Git like the current newest version and the one that when you make a, when you run another Composer install, or you, when you run, when you deploy again, it actually just removes that old one and installs a new one. So, uh, the, the newest, latest version. So it actually, yeah, keeps your code a lot smaller because you don't have, you know, the many megabytes of code in there. You just have a recipe with Composer to how to install that code. Um, and then, yeah, this is a little picture of the, on the right here in the Pantheon dashboard. It now is Composer aware too, so that when you, this won't work on Drupal 7, but it will, 8, 9, 10, that type of thing. But if, if you have it set up correctly. But yeah, what here we'll say is like, oh, I found a new version of one of these modules. And actually, if you want to just hit the supply update right here, Pantheon will actually just run Composer update for you and apply those updates to that environment. So that can be, but you can also do it on your local machine too if you want. Um, and then push those changes up as well. But it's kind of handy to have at least that option to run the updates there. Uh, yeah, like I said earlier, if you're going to develop, develop locally, if you just pull down the Git code, you'll just have the composer.json, composer.lock file, and a few other things. But if you run composer install, you'll, it'll get you all your code right there. Um, and then, yeah, on your local, you can require new modules, update things as well. Um, and then just commit the files, the composer.json, composer.lock, and everything else will just 
be installed after you push your changes. Um, and then, yeah, there's a few links for documentation here if you want to look at that. Or if you have any questions, you can ask me too. And I think I went through these pretty quickly, so we have plenty of time for more questions. And if you have your favorite Composer tips and tricks or things that you like to do with Composer that you want to share, feel free to do that as well. Thank you. I don't know. Oh, yep, right there. For the Composer update command, mm -hmm. um, does that, I think I saw in there that it said it updates all libraries. Is that just within the core, or is that literally all libraries or like all modules? If you, if you just run Composer update by itself, yeah, it'll try to update everything. Um, I think, let's see if I, yeah, right here it says composer update Drupal core dash asterisk. Mm -hmm. That's saying I, I don't want to update everything, I just want to update the core and anything that it depends on. So it will actually update most things probably, but if there was a few, you know, if, yeah, if you ran just composer update, it would try to update everything. Um, and if you just say Drupal, Drupal core, Drupal, and then a module name, it'll just only try to update that. Um, and even, actually, it won't even try to update the dependencies unless you add that with all dependencies truck flag. So, um, yeah, that's a good question, though. Yeah. Follow up for that one, I'm sorry. Yeah, go for it. Can you, when you do Composer update, is it possible to just exclude like one or two modules? Um, so, yeah, one thing I didn't talk about here a little bit is, uh, actually, I don't know if I have a good example in here. Um, it, let's see, I'll go back here to the composer require here. No, actually, I'll go back to the composer.json file. Right here, it's a little bit hard to see there. There's a little asterisk or a little no, a carrot before the 10 there. And there, that's actually, there's a, on the composer documentation, it talks about there's a few different things you could put there. You could actually, in your composer.json file, say, I want. 10.1.3, which is the current version, and if you just put just that in there for Drupal Core, it will always want to use that version. It will never update, basically. But the little carrot says, I want anything that's newer, that, that's the 10 version. So um, actually, yeah, in this case, if it's just 10, it would actually, when it, and then 10.2 comes out, it would be like, oh, I see an update. But you could also say, hey, I want just 10.1, and any new major version, I don't want to update that automatically. Um, so there, yeah, there's a few different, I, I don't remember all of them, but there's like, the carrot says like any minor version updates I want, but not the newest, not a new major version. So like when Drupal 11 comes out, it wouldn't update right when you hit Composer Update unless you added some things to say, I really actually do want 11. Um, so yeah, there's, there's some control you have there. If you really want to, you could say always use this one version, but usually there's, uh, you know, there's, at some point, probably going to be some updates that you do want to pull in at some point. Um, but there's a few other different, I, mean, I can't remember the other, there's a few other different, like a dollar sign or a something or other that, that does slightly different versions where it says, I'll only, I'll, I'll take maybe more major version updates, but not like a brand, like a really, really new version or something. So the, there's, a, there's, a, 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 there's a whole system called like a semantic versioning, which says like the three, there's a three parts of the version number, the main number, the minor version number, and then the like bug fix patch version as well. So usually you just want to say, I want to, you know, th th that gives you some control over, you know, do you want to do an update anytime there's a minor version update or do you want to even allow it to do uh, the major updates as well? Because uh, those things are more likely to break your code <laughs> if you do that. So. Uh, question can over you here. Remove, uh, a module with all its dependencies? Can you remove it? Yeah. Uh, there is a composer remove command, I believe, that I didn't mention there. Yeah. Does that get rid of all the dependencies as well? Yeah. If the dependencies are not needed by anything else, it will remove them. Yeah. Um, like I said, there's, I think, some cases where it's like, you know, a bunch of different modules could require the same thing. So it'll actually, you know, it'll remove it if it's not needed anymore. If it's if it's needed by something else, it'll probably just keep it there. And so sometimes you might see, oh, it's not it's not removing. But actually, there are fun. I didn't mention them here, but there are a few commands that are fun uh, to help understand some of those issues I, that I use sometimes. The composer y, and then the name of a library. So composer y, you know, Drupal slash pathauto 
will say, hey, I've got this whole, <laughs> or uh, you know, the, the main JSON, composer to JSON file requires that. But you could also say composer Y, and then you know, one of those symphony libraries, and it'll actually list out all the different libraries that require that symphony library. So there's, that's a way to kind of debug if it says, you know, why is this, or you're wondering why is this installed, it'll actually just tell you a little more information about why that is there. And uh, I've also found that helpful when you think it should update to something, but it doesn't. You can say, you know, why is it? And the other thing that sometimes happens too, I guess, is sometimes people, or sometimes, yeah, sometimes, uh, I mentioned, I think, earlier in there, so it is a text file that you could, you could modify yourself. Uh, if you, if you miss a, co a comma or a bracket somewhere, though, then when you run Composer next time, it's going to be like, the, 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 the Composer file doesn't make any sense anymore. And it'll say, like, you have a syntax error here somewhere. Um, I, I think, you know, just use the Composer commands, because otherwise it's very easy to write a syntax error in here. And it can be a little hard to figure out where your syntax error is. Um, but you could modify it directly in the text file. Um, and then some interesting things sometimes do happen. Uh, and that's where you, if you run Composer install then, even if you have the syntax correctly, it might say, I can't actually install anything because like, some of these things are incompatible with each other. Like, you want to use this module, but it doesn't have a version that works with Drupal core of, of the version you currently have installed. And so those things are also sometimes hard to read. It's a very, it's like, I tried to do this and this and this and this and this, and none of them worked or something. Is what it, it kind of shows you its whole process of like, this, these are all the things I tried to do, and none of it worked. And so you kind of have to read through that very carefully and decide like, what, what thing do I want to tackle there? And that, that's where the composer why can be helpful, or the composer why not command actually as well, another one too, that you can actually say, I want to use this version, but why won't you install it for me? <laughs> um, so that's, yeah. That's fun. Um, yes? So two things. For the composer remove, if you're going to yeah. do that, make sure you uninstall your module first. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Running yeah. In interesting situations. Uh, yeah, if you, yeah, if you don't install, uninstall your module, there's probably still something. The uninstall thing in the Drupal admin basically, yeah, removes things from the database that have to do with the module. Right. So, yeah, if you don't uninstall it first, that's, that's a good point. Then, then Drupal will start complaining, like, hey, there's a module here. But I don't know what to do, and and there's still be some data there at least. Yeah, orphaned, orphaned data in your database. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. then also, if you so what you're just talking about with composer.json and the composer.lock, they'll become unsynced if you manually modify something. Oh yes, yeah, that's true. JSON, and so throw like they, they don't match. Yeah, it does make a little warning. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to modify it and you know what you're doing, you can change whatever you want in your composer.json and run composer u nothing, and it will match the composer JSON in the lock file lock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're modifying the composer.json manually, the next time you run composer install, it'll say like the composer.json and the composer lock file don't agree. Like you might want to run composer update to fix that. Um, Cause yeah. But if you run composer update, you'll update things. Update lots of things, uh, yeah. Nothing. It oh, will not update, yeah. but it will match. The Just run composer That's cool. and yeah, it'll kind of right. write itself. Yeah. There, there is a flag for composer update. I think it's uh, dash dash dry dash run. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so dry run, yep. and that will show you what it would update, but it doesn't actually do the update. Yeah, that can be handy too. Yeah, the dry run flag because then you can see at least what it wants to update and decide. Do I want to do that before I actually <laughs> run it? I mean, the other thing too is if your code's in Git, you can always just say, "Hey, go back." <laughs> To what it was before, and then um, you know at least you get an old version of the composer to lock file and run composer install, and it will basically just undo whatever you just did too. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Can you develop a custom module theme? Is there an appropriate way to use composer to do that, or should you just drop it in your modules folder? Um, I, yeah, I think that really depends. I think on how you're managing those modules, but there is there is ways to do that. Um, in the composer.json file, you can actually say, hey. Actually, what, is it, is it the start, there's it's repositories. repositories. Yeah, those are the default repositories. Or it's, it's Well, one of them is a Pantheon thing. But the first one is packages, yeah, the Drupal composer area um, and, and the main composer area. Um, but yeah, yeah, it, it knows where the Drupal is. And then you, the, uh, but you, you can add in more repositories there. Just say, like, this GitHub repository has more libraries that you could look at. 
And so you, you could yeah, put your own custom modules on your GitHub and say, hey, here's where they are in the composer.json file. And then it would actually just install those. But you could also just put it in the code as well. It really depends on think, how you want to manage it. Um, but then, yeah, the nice thing is then, too, I guess, if you do that type of thing where you list it in the repositories, then when you release a new version, any other site that you've used that thing already on with that module, you can then use Composer to update it as well. So, yeah, so there's a number of things like that they call them Composer plugins. I mean, that's not a plugin, but there is a Composer plugin. I think that's probably installed here too. Yeah, there's a Composer patches plugin. So if you need to, like, modify Drupal core or some other things, which you don't really normally want to do, but in some cases you might have to do, um, then you can actually write a patch file, which is just a little diff file. Um, and you can actually include it in kind of so the extra information in the, in the composer.json file. And then after it installs everything, it'll actually you know, just apply that patch. Um, one thing I always find is tough about those is when there's an update that fixes that patch, then the patch won't work anymore. And so then you start getting these errors when you run the updates because it'll be like, I can't actually apply this patch anymore because the code is different. And so then you have to kind of detect that and maybe get through that, but yeah. Maybe you can touch on real quick uh, deployment and using Composer and not committing vendor Yeah, I think, and yeah, on Pantheon, and, and I think depending on how you're setting up your deployment systems, if you're gonna deploy using Composer, uh, the git ignore file is very important, or there's a, in any folder you can have a git ignore file that says like don't commit any changes to these files or folders in, in, underneath this folder. Um, and on, on Pantheon, and, and if you have it set up well, you'd want to have the git ignore file to ignore all the places where Composer is going to install stuff, because then it'll actually, uh, you know, you won't commit the files and then run a Composer install, and it'll actually try to install different files um, or the same files again. So yeah, when you use Pantheon, for sure, it, it, it starts, if it's a Composer-based site, it does start with a git ignore file that is pretty long. It says, don't put the vendor folder, don't put the modules contrib folder, and all this stuff into Git. And then what, what happens is that when you deploy, it actually just, it kind of ignores that git ignore stuff for a second, but actually you know, throws into Git the, all the stuff that Composer installed. Um, so. The major reason that's good is so it, it guarantees code consistency. So like if somebody was developing on the site and they just put a module somewhere, it'll rebuild and that module will no longer be there. So it eliminates yeah. mistakes. Yeah. The teams. Yeah, that, yeah that, that way you know that only the stuff that's committed there is, is, is in the code. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Well, I don't know. Any other questions that I'm missing? I'd, Probably, yeah, go for it. Um, I'm not sure if you've worked in the U of M sort of ecosystem, so this might I have be not, but the room. Um, does all the Composer stuff work appropriately with the OIT deployment stuff? Mm, I, don't, I don't know about that, but yeah, question about U of M and OIT deployment stuff. I'd I mean, that's, that's specific, but it does work in CI systems. You just have to set it up properly, and yeah. you're executing Composer commands automatically with Whatever system, so it will, but it has to be solid. Yeah, I mean, even some yeah. the way that some some sites on Pantheon, we recommend you kind of do it this way with Pantheon. But it, on other systems, you could actually just do this all locally on your machine, and then you you wouldn't do the thing I just said about Git ignore, you know, ignoring everything. But you'd basically then run Composer install on your machine, commit everything, and push that up to wherever you're deploying it to. That, that's one way you could do it. Um, but it would be nicer if it was included in your deployment system for sure, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see, yeah, if I don't see your hand, just feel free to yell out. <laughs> but hopefully that was helpful, I guess, yeah. I guess so more of like getting this set up, oftentimes I find like using another system, there's a bunch of extra stuff in there. Mm. How do you, I think you just said initially at the beginning that you could just do like a base build of it and build on top of that. How would you recommend starting from scratch and building on top? Or would you recommend that at all or start with some analysis? Um, let's see, I think I mentioned here there's a, uh, 
yeah, right here is the is the Drupal documentation definitely talks about this is how you can just start with a very basic Drupal core core and like it, it does have a few other things in the Composer JSON file saying hey yeah here the modules go here and the other things because that's something that Drupal really needs to run. Um, if you if it put all the modules in the vendor folder, Drupal wouldn't actually detect them. <laughs> I think so. There is a few things, and this would have this would be one place to start. Um, and then yeah, I think lots of agencies and things do sometimes have their own kind of composer-based setup where they you know add in a bunch of modules and things that they really like the the theme systems that they like to use and that type of thing. But um, I think that's a good starting point. Um, to at least just get you started with Composer, and then you can yeah. add on from there if you, if you need more. Um, I, yeah, I'd recommend looking over just the Drupal Composer documentation as well as the main Composer documentation, and it does have a, a good amount of information there. So. But yeah, I guess if that's it, we can just end this. Well, <laughs> thanks very much. Yeah, thank you very much.